Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we calculated the amount of power required to push fluid through a pipe. But how do we introduce that into Bernoulli's equation? So here we have the equation, and notice we added an extra term on the left side of the equation. We called it P sub P, and this is a term that is representative of pressure. Now, we know that pumps add energy to a system, and that is why we place it on the left side of the equation, because we're adding energy to the system. But why is it in terms of power? Or, in this case, in terms of pressure, I should say, instead of in terms of power. That's because Bernoulli's equation, every term is representative in the units of pressure. And pressure is pascals, that's newtons per square meter. So how do we relate that? How do we relate the power input of the of the pump to a term that's expressed in terms of pascals so what we're trying to do is we're trying to relate the power delivered by the pump to the pressure term p sub p so it's the pressure delivered by the pump now notice that we have an equation here where the power delivered by the pump is equal to the efficiency of the pump times the power produced and so maybe we should put some parentheses around it like that so it's the efficiency times the power produced and so, yes, E is indeed the efficiency. So if the pump gives you five horsepower, but it's only 80% efficient, that means that you only get four, four horsepower delivered to the system. Hmm. That's our cat again. All right, continuing. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we start with the definition of power. Now, notice we have P for pressure and P for power. So to give you the difference between the two, I put a little notation here that this is P for power. And by definition, it's work divided by time. And work by definition is four times distance. So force times distance divided by time. We can look at distance divided by time, which is really velocity. So the power input to the system by the pump is going to be the force applied times the velocity of the fluid inside the pipe. And then since pressure can be defined as force divided by area, force can also be expressed as pressure times area. So instead of force, we're going to replace force by pressure times area. So now we have the power of the pump is equal to the pressure, and we'll call it the pressure of the pump times the area, times velocity. So the force is now replaced by pressure times area. And of course, we're talking about the pressure of the pump. Now we also know that the product of cross-section area times velocity can also be thought of as the amount of volume of fluid going through the system per unit time. So A times V can be expressed as the amount of volume per unit time, so the amount of fluid flow through the pipe. So we can replace those two. Now we have the power produced by the, or delivered to the system by the, um, by the pump is equal to the pressure to, provided by the pump times the amount of fluid flowing through the pipe per unit time. Now, if we solve this equation for the pressure of the pump, it is now equal to the power delivered, which is the power produced times the efficiency, divided by the amount of fluid flow, or if you like it, instead of writing a delta V delta T, we could write as the cross-section area times velocity. Either way, this is how that term that we add on the left side of the equation to indicate the pressure provided by the pump can be expressed in terms of this or expressed like that. And so now we know where that term came from, why it's there, and how to calculate it. That is how it's done.